Hello and welcome back to another episode of Reach Your Happy with Laura. So I saw a post earlier today and it said something along the lines of if you think getting out of a or healing from a toxic relationship is challenging, something else that's equally as challenging just in different ways is being in a healthy relationship. And I remember when I got into a relationship with my now husband, Brad, almost eight years ago, I had a hard time with the adjustment from constantly stress, constantly dealing with some drama and moving into things being more peaceful. In a way, it felt boring. And when I would ask myself, like, you know, is there something else that we could be doing? Is it a lack of newness? You know, like what is it that I find boring? And I realized that my nervous system was so used to being stressed out, having some sort of drama to deal with, um, worried about whether or not this person was being faithful to me. And when that all was taken away and I was so sure that we were both all in on this relationship and we both wanted to grow together that it, it this boredom was actually what I've always longed for and really it was peace. It was peace of mind, peace in knowing that I didn't have to worry about uh, my relationship with my partner and instead I got to focus on myself and there was a desire to focus on a relationship that was challenging because it took time and attention away from my own stuff. So getting into a healthy relationship, you unwind so much of your conditioning from toxic relationships, from really tough ones. And in that unwinding, you have, it's quite intense, right? You, you face a lot of stuff. You have to be extremely present with yourself when something challenging arises to not go to your default conditioned response, which is usually defensive and maybe aggressive, or maybe you freeze, maybe you run, whatever your tendency is. And instead to choose to respond differently. And when you make it through that phase of it, then comes the growth. Then comes, oh, now that I don't have to focus on someone else and be putting out fires and instead I get to grow, shoot, now it's me. Now, now it's time for me. Now I'm being encouraged to grow and evolve past the point that I've been before. And there is resistance to that because it's new territory so some people say like how do i keep finding these toxic relationships why do i keep putting myself in the same situation with just different faces different humans our brain goes towards the familiar it goes to what we know and that we kick off relationships and they can feel so good and it's like oh, i feel so comfortable i feel so like, is this a comfort that I am, that is healthy for me? Or is it a comfort that is just familiar to me? And there's a slight difference, but there is a difference. And this is true of, I'm, I'm talking specifically about romantic relationships, because that's really where I have had the most growth. But when one thing changes, all other things change. So though I'm talking about romantic relationships, this can be in relationship to your children. It can be in relationship to friendships, to coworkers, to your boss, to your physical body. It can be in relationship to the, you and the world around you. So upon entering a new relationship, I know I have had the tendency of overthinking it and okay, is this the person? Is this who I really want to do it with? Is is this exactly what I need? And now I'm seeing through this eight year process that it's not about knowing that that person is the one, but rather knowing that this person is in my life for a purpose. 
and I can't quite see the purpose. When I'm on, when I'm going through the process, I often can't see the end result. When I first started dating Brad, I wanted to be his wife, but I had actually never brought myself to that idea fully. I had never imagined myself on my wedding day. I never allowed myself to go there. There were so many things in the way. Um, sadness about you know not having my mom present, um, not knowing if I really wanted to commit to something like that for fear of losing him. So I never brought myself to like where I am now, but I got here. Right? I got to a place that I had never dreamed of in my own mind, and yet I'm here. Our work isn't to figure out how do I get to that like perfect spot, but instead, or rather, how do I get to the end goal? Rather, it's what is this relationship having me focus on right now? What is this asking me to grow through? When Brad and I first started, I so I'm the youngest of five, and I often felt like I wasn't being heard or listened to or that what I had to say wasn't important. So the beginning of our relationship, I was very, a, a very common phrase I would use was, are you listening to me? And men throughout my life, I have this pattern of maybe not communicating at the right time or communicating kind of vaguely, expecting them to read their my mind because I can sense a lot of stuff. So I've always expected other people to be able to do the same thing. So anyways, the beginning of our relationship was really focused on, are you hearing me? And what I thought was a him thing of not being a good listener was actually a me thing about me not being a proper a solid communicator. I would say things but not directly. So that's the beautiful thing about relationships that the person, okay, person in you, I'm saying you're not a good listener and he's saying I'm listening. Now I have to look at that and go look at myself and say, okay, he says he's listening. I have to take his word for it, right? What else can I do there? There's got to be something deeper. If I don't feel heard, is it because I'm not understanding myself? Am I not hearing myself? Or again, there's so many layers to it. Am I not fully communicating? And I through hundreds of people I have worked with, relationships are a majority of what I talk about. Sometimes it's just your relationship to yourself, but other times it's your relationship to in-laws, to your husband, to your potential mate, to a potential mate that you don't even have in your field yet, but you're wanting. And communication is the common thread. And we are not taught to communicate. That's not a, a, any curriculum in school. We learn to read aloud, right? We learn to um, write things on paper and write stories and that kind of thing. But we are not taught the art of communication and it is an art because communication takes two very important pieces that need to be there for communication to be effective. Both the communicator being effective in their speech in using words that they actually mean. And then the recipient of those words needs to be able to listen. And listening is a skill set. We do a lot of talking, but we don't do a lot of listening. And I realize that in my work because I, my work isn't to just give advice, to give insight, to give input. My work is really to fully listen, disregarding all my filters about the world and relationships and loss and marriage and animals. And I have to swipe that all clean and just be an open, neutral container. 
to fully hear what you're saying both the words the essence the emotion i'm seeing in your face or hearing over the phone and what i have received from learning how to listen is the realization that good communication takes so much but mostly it takes the recipient willing to listen and also kind of reflect back what you said and not in a like a therapist like so I'm hearing you say it's like okay so you're using this word is that what you really mean because that's that's what I mean trying to understand like that doesn't quite make sense to me but if we're not listening the cross communication the like <clears throat> the static we hear just intensifies and so though <clears throat> you I know all of you are at different phases in your relationship. Some people have been married for 20 years. Some people are so freaking single <laughs> and don't see a mate in sight. But there is always something that we can chew on as an individual and being impeccable with your words. Thinking and communicating with yourself in complete sentences. And I'm not saying do that all the time, that could drive you a little mad and it takes a lot of focus, but you know, when you feel anxious and you're like, I feel this and I'm this, and I'm you're bouncing all around, you're like, gosh, you're clean. Wait, no, I wanna do my makeup, wait, no, hold on. <laughs> and you're just like zigzagging all over the place and you make yourself exhausted and overwhelmed and enhance the anxiety. A practice to use is fully formed sentences have a proper communication with yourself. I feel anxious about this part in my day. I have felt anxious like this before. And I do have evidence that I can maneuver my way through this anxiety. And today, I would like to do it better than I ever have. And I know that's gonna take a little bit more concentration on my part. How could I set myself up for success here? I haven't had anything to eat. I know eating helps my nervous system calm down, makes me feel more cared for and settled. I'm going to start with making myself a meal. From there, I will continue to decide what I need for myself. Let's begin there. Now, this was just like an ad lib conversation I'm having, but I notice a shift in me. I don't know if you feel it for yourself. It's like, okay, I have some direction here. I'm not zigzagging all over the place. I'm being very deliberate. And that's the key with communicating with a partner when things are heated, but also when things are calm, that fully formed sentences, that our tendency is to protect ourselves, to, to defend, to put our guard up. But all a guard does is block the, think about like if I had a wall, a shield in front of me, I'm blocking the communication. So again, whether you're deeply into a relationship or you're single as single gets, building this skill set of communication. When you're at CVS and you're paying for something and the woman asks you, do you want a bag? And you're like, yeah, thank you. Or you're like, oh no, I didn't want to. Allowing yourself and, and encouraging yourself to be more present in your everyday interactions because your communication with the UPS driver, the CVS gal, to your clients, to your boss, to people on the road, it all amounts to you being a better, more seasoned communicator in your relationships. 
And for whatever reason, I was just thinking, oh, where did I start this? Like, where did this kick off? And that was uh, with the boredom that I felt when I, when I felt safe in a relationship, in this relationship. And the safety allowed me to unwind so much pain, which I needed the safety, I needed the boredom, if you will, the like consistency to allow me to unearth deeper layers of pain that I needed support in moving through, but ultimately I needed to feel safe and willing to let those feelings arise. And in the allowance of that, so much has unfolded and become clear to me. I am not rid of my shadows, of my insecurities, of those things that I have deemed because other people have said are unacceptable. They're not gone, but through this comfort in my relationship, through this boredom that then allowed me to, to process things, I have a better relationship with myself. So wherever you are, you can, and it, I think is the most valuable, to begin with yourself. Knowing that your partner or your friend or your sibling is simply an assistant to your growth. I like that. People are assisting us in our personal evolution. And sometimes that looks like a jerk of a boss. Other times that looks like a really loving partner and you don't feel worthy of receiving that love. So you, you sabotage it. And giving up clinging to this expectation or this idea of how you think it should go and instead notice what's present notice what's up and respond to that life is so beautifully orchestrated in that way that it delivers everything that you need right now to prepare you for the next phase of your life like you are so not alone. You are so taken care of. But it's it's allowing that idea in. The potential that all of my life has not been a massive screw up, hasn't been a waste of time, but instead this, this preparation, this phase to help morph me into a different person to be prepared for the next phase and the next one and the next one and the next one. I know that, I, you know, clients who I've seen over time, it's like we start at a certain point and whether you're three months in, six months in, three years in, five, some people are five years in, that I have this ability to kind of look back and go, oh my gosh, remember where we started? Remember who you were and who you are now? All of that was for something. It's like you tried on different ways of being to figure out that doesn't really fit me. Let me shape myself into who I really want to become for my highest good and to respond to the world, to, to respond to the environment that I'm within. It's, it's remarkable. I cannot believe that was 20 minutes. I just looked at the time. Thank you for tuning in. That is all I have for you today. If you have questions, if you like some sort of follow-up, you just let me know. I'm available. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you so much. Until next time, take good care, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.